Hi there. Are you feeling a little bit overwhelmed throughout this process? Or perhaps you want to make sure that you are going to create a positive experience for your patients. Welcome, and I'm happy to have you here today. I am Rini Hanekom, and I'm the co-founder of the Executive's Virtual Assistants. We support and empower business owners, entrepreneurs, and practitioners. We offer solutions to their worries and their problems. And by that, we, do, we lighten their load. We pride ourselves that our client list stretches from local to global. And it is our passion to make your success our priority. In this 30 minute webinar, I will share some of my tips and show healthcare professionals just how easy it is to deliver a telehealth session with confidence. Let's look at the topics that we will be discussing today. Let's just get the presentation up. There we go. So, create a telehealth experience that you and your patients will love. The topics that we will run through today are basic navigation tips, security on and confidential rooms, how to schedule and prepare for a consultation. We'll talk about props and extras, basic video calling etiquette, and then we'll end off and I'll tell you about a, a very exciting opportunity, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching that will be available. So yes, as technology develops, we are presented with more and more options to choose from. It's overwhelming, I know. But we must look at the positive. It's a, it gives us a, a wide variety to choose from and to decide which one would suit your needs and your pocket best. Each digital platform will have their own set of pros and cons. For today's webinar, I will be showing you um, doxy.me as the platform. However, I'm, using, I'm doing a recording on Zoom. First off, I want to show you these are some of the platforms available and um, there are many more. So we've got doxy.me and MediC, um, but I, I think you're all um, familiar with most of these names. I've put Halaxy on there. They do not have a telehealth platform as yet, but I did receive an uh, email from them last week that in the next week or two, they are implementing a telehealth um, platform with integrated tools. Halaxy is also a free clinical software which you can download from the internet. So, First off, when you've decided which platform you want to use, you need to download it or register online um, and create a profile. Um, oh, I think also I wanted to mention, I think it's very important that you must make yourself familiar. Where's your webcam on your laptop or your phone or, or computer or whatever you've decided to use? I do think um, it's better perhaps for you to use a laptop and a computer just for the obvious reasons that you will most probably be using your hands um, during your telehealth session and you don't want to be bound by holding your phone. Um, also, you need to check your sound and your microphone on your device. Is it switched on and has the app been given access to your microphone and your sound. And all these settings you will find on your computer um, under systems, sound and display. So you can just check that. Um, I've found and I've seen that that two things can create such a big frustration and you feel flustered then uh, your patient can't hear you or your or you can't hear your patient. So that's definitely something that you need to make sure you know where it is and that you can find it quickly if you see that it's not working. Okay, so let's move on. I want to show you, this is uh, doxy.me's 
um, uh, interface, how it would look like. Um, you will see on the left hand side is your options to choose from. We are currently on your dashboard. And this is what the dashboard will look like. And just to run through some of the pictures here, the options you have edit your waiting room. Here you can customize what um, message your patient will see um, when they receive your email and when they are actually in the meeting room. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about meeting rooms in just a second. You can also change your account settings. This is where you can enable the waiting room, secure it with a meeting, uh, with a passcode. You can also upload your profile picture or perhaps your uh, practice logo. Um, it will actually also show over here, but I didn't put one up for today's session. If we then look at the top part, this is where you, this is your room name and you will uh, send this link to your patients. You've got more than one option. I find the clients the or the practices that I assist with sending these links out to their patients, the patients really, um, they like to, to receive this via WhatsApp as well as email. So what I do is I open WhatsApp on my laptop and I copy this link and I send it via WhatsApp. And then I'll also just uh, say that, um, this has been sent to you with a list of instructions or tips by, via email. You can also, you can look here, you can click on invite via, and then you can send it uh, with email, a calendar invite, or even a text message, an SMS. You can also put a badge up on your website where they can click through to it. So for today's session, I just wanted to show you what it would look like or the uh, different um, options you have when you do schedule a meeting. So if we just quickly go back, if you look here to the left, you've got patient queue and you see it says no one has checked in yet. So if we look at the next slide, you will see it says Rini is waiting with a little cat winky face, winky. Um, winking and, um, and it will show you how long they've been waiting. You have the, um, you can click on it and then it pops up a screen to say start video call, start chatting. It also gives you some additional info on the patient if they're using a phone or a laptop. It also says where they are from. In this case, it said obviously South Africa. When you start your video call, you have more options. You can uh, take a, a picture, um, you can take a photo. This I think would be great if you want uh, to see what the patient is drawing and you ask them to put it up to the camera or you ask them to write something or for any other reason that you want to take a picture that there is an option. You can do a group call, you can do screen share which I'll talk on just now and then you can also send a file to your patient. You can even arrange payment options doxy.me. So on the far right hand you will see this is what it would look like if you am um, in a video call session and I have pressed screen share and here at the back is my daughter and a bear. She was my guinea pig walking around in my house with my phone. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so getting back you will have then the option to either share your own screen or you can ask your patient you can request for them to share their screen. And then you've got the normal basic buttons to pause the video call, put off your camera, switch off your microphone, some additional video settings, the quality, and also end the call. Um, I'm just scared I'm going to forget, but I want to just talk about putting off your video camera and also or your webcam and muting yourself. Um, really make sure when you've put down the call or you've finished your video call that your webcam is no longer on or that your mic is not active. Make double sure of this. I've heard of horror stories of people that didn't realize their camera is still on or their mic is still on and that the person on the other side heard things that they shouldn't have heard. So that's just a, a friendly warning.
So security and confidential meeting rooms. I know that this is one of your main concerns with telehealth sessions. And yes, it, it should be. You will need to check with whatever platform that you've chosen that they are secure and confidential, but also that they treat your and your patient's information with, um, with utmost confidentiality. You also you can also find out what if they put in place for you to um, empower your sessions with even more security. So for, for today, we won't have time to look at all the platforms. We will, however, look at doxy.me. Doxy.me offers you to offers you the option to enable the waiting room. The waiting room works exactly the same as it would in your in your physical practice. Um, practice it your patients will wait there and once you are ready you will go and collect them from the waiting room it gives you the control who enters your your practice room at what time and that is fantastic so you can even up the security um, we are here in account settings and i have enabled the room passcode and i've set the passcode I would recommend you change the passcode regularly. Um, and look, you will still have the control to say who goes in, who comes, who enters your um, practice room and when, but I just always find it's better to um, set up new passcodes regularly. And just to talk a little bit about the screen further, um, you can change the room name. We've called this the executives. And this obviously is directly linked to the link that you will send your patients. You can put what your name is and how you want to address, or how the, you want the patients to address you. Um, and there's some other options that you can look through. It is really a nice platform to use. Okay, so if we move along to scheduling and preparing for a consultation, you've chosen your platform, you've set the um, security measures and your meeting room is not confidential. Now what? So I think the most important thing is you want your patients to feel at ease and not overwhelmed. They might be using your platform for the first time. So I think it is, and also telehealth for the first time. So I think it is very important that you should phone your patient prior to their first telehealth session. In, when you phone them, you should explain to them what is telehealth? How will it work? What is your expectation of, as the practitioner of them as the patient? Educate them around what you will be doing throughout the session and also putting them at ease that this session is still private and confidential. And you can share with them what you've put in place to make it confidential. You can perhaps, when your virtual assistant, or perhaps it's even yourself, send your um, confirmation of the, of the appointment you, and the, also the link to them, you can send them a, a short descriptive note on. Um, on instructions or you know, send them, sorry, um, some instructions on how to set up on their side, the technical side of things, how to download the program or how to log in for the first time. You can also summarize perhaps what you've said over the phone, what they would expect of the session. You can also share some tips on the video call, uh, on video calling etiquette, which we also will be talking about a little bit later. It will basically be a summary of what you've said over the phone. And then um, how would we prepare for this? So just as you would prepare for your face-to-face -face consultation, you have to prepare for your telehealth session. And I think sometimes even more perhaps that you would have um, prepared for your face-to-face -face consultation. And my clients have said to me, they find it valuable when I help them set up a checklist unique to their needs. You can go over this checklist before every video call. Here are some um, examples that could be on your checklist. In, this is a general uh, checklist, of course. Is your laptop fully charged or is it plugged in? Do you have a pen and paper close by? 
are all the apps open on your laptop or computer that you want to use for the session? Did you put a sign on the door for your family or colleagues when you go back after lockdown to say, please be quiet outside the door. I'm busy with a therapy session. Is your background professional and appropriate for your session? These are just some of the things that I've put on checklist and it's a general checklist, but it does really put you at ease as well. Okay, here come some of the fun parts, props and extras. So Doxy.me has great extras, which we looked at previously when we shared the, how it looks like on a video call, but other platforms have other extras as well. So um, what I would, I'm going to talk more around screen share because I think that um, is something that most platforms have available. And I would really encourage you to use um, screen share. It does, you can think a little bit outside the box, you can get creative, but it is a great way of keeping your audience captured or your patients for that matter, sorry. So I've got the boom cards. You can use boom cards, which is nice and interactive. Um, you can share a video of yourself doing a specific exercise that you want the patient to model like order kits, which I've got a, a photo of there, an image. You can create a story on PowerPoint, PowerPoint slides or have information on PowerPoint slides and share with your patients. You can share images, videos, PDF books. Really, the possibilities are endless. Some platforms even allow you that once you've plugged in your phone to your laptop or computer, that you can share your mobile phone's screen and, and, and camera, sorry. So this is also great because it offers you mobility. You can sit and talk behind your laptop, share your phone's camera, and just walk around your laptop and to show whatever you've set up or something that you want to show your, your patients. I've got some great um, tips and tricks but we'll talk a little bit more after the web, uh, at the end of this webinar. Hey, let's get back to basics. Yes, there is something as video calling etiquette, and it is very important. By following the correct video calling etiquette, you will look professional and you will create a positive experience for you and your patients. And I think video calling you must pay just as much attention as the previous points that we touched on. And I will share some of my tips with you. Appearances matter in telehealth. Dress code should be the same as what it would have been in your face-to-face -face consultation. So yes, that does mean you have to wear a proper pants and you cannot attend in your pajamas. You might laugh at this or think it very basic, but you will be surprised at the videos or the sessions, video calling sessions that I've seen. You might not attend to get up, but and your pet might barge into the room and you need to get up to take him outside. You might remember something that you've forgotten or that you want to show the patient and now you have to get up to go get it. So I think it is better to always adhere to the correct dress code and be ready just as you would have been in a face-to-face -face consultation. Please check your background. All these platforms have the opportunity for you to, do, to, to check your background, switch on your video, uh, your webcam, and see what it is that your patient will see about you and your practice. You, you don't want them to see heaps of laundry waiting to be ironed, which in my case at my home is the situation right now, just to say that that picture isn't my home, but you don't want them to see your laundry waiting to be ironed. You don't want them to see inappropriate photos or pictures. You want to try and choose a plain colored wall, as you saw at, in my um, introduction video. It is a plain colored wall or a plain colored background. Simple. 
Perhaps you can hang your diploma behind you, just as you would in your practice room. Or you can put up some nice posters of, of um, the anatomy of the body, which you can show to if you need to use it in your session. Or if you are going to work with children, have some interesting pictures behind you, but it shouldn't take too much from you. Also, if we just look at the picture, this um, very confusing picture or very, oops, are we, sorry, let's just quickly go back. I wanna say something before I move on. If we look at this picture to the left, close all your doors. You do not want to see a bathroom and also perhaps somebody walking by and it just grabs the patient's attention. Close your doors. It will also um, give the feeling of secure and confidential space. Lights, camera, action. So now you've decided where you want to have your session. And um, now you need to check your lighting. You want your light anywhere but behind you. It may mean that you'll have to hang a temporary curtain, or maybe you have to move your desk from time to time. The more shadowy and shadier your image will look, the less professional you will appear. I have loads of secrets and tips on how to achieve this in any room, and also at any time of the day. If you look to the, in, on the picture on the left, you will see this is what you would look like if you sit in front of a window or have a light from the back. You will look like a silhouette. People won't be able to see your facial features. Um, it's very important to focus on this because this can also create, a, a, like I said, a fuzzy, a fuzzy picture. If you look to the picture on the right, you will see this is a great setup. They have a white wall in front of them where the, the lighting will reflect back onto, the, onto your face. They've got two lights there, which if it is darker, maybe at nighttime. This station is perfect. It's a setup for any time of the day. This is also tips that you can share with your patients because you might want to be able to see their face and how they articulate words. Um, so this is something that you need to spend time on as well. Okay, eye level. You need to make sure that your lap laptop or webcam is eye level. You can simply place it on a little box or you can put it on books or files, but it is, you need to have it um, eye level. This little box on the right is very easy to make. I've got a similar setup at the moment. Um, this will also enable you to look at the camera, at the webcam. And then your patients will feel like they're making eye contact with you. And you will also come across attentive. You should avoid looking at yourself at the screen. And I know that's difficult, but this angle is also much more flattering. If you have your webcam too low, they will look, in your, they will look at your neck and up your nose. If you have it too high, your forehead seems too big and out of proportion. So eye level is the way to go. Smile. I think that's a very big thing. You need to smile and give loads of energy. Your patients will most probably only be seeing you from your shoulders up. You need to exaggerate emotions and talk with your hands. Think Italian. You can see here the lady on the right-hand side. She's waving to, to whoever she's talking to. She's saying hi there or waving goodbye when you want to um, perhaps uh, talk about a few points, show your fingers and point to them. Um, you need to put energy into your sessions to keep your patients um, engaged. And here are my last few tips that will quickly run through because I'm scared I'm going to run out of time. You want to limit background noise. So um, you want to be able to, or you want to make sure that your patients can hear you clearly, but you need also to be able to hear them. This is where I've, I've said previously, hang a sign on the door, 
do not disturb. When you walk by my door, be quiet. I'm busy with the session. Or you otherwise choose a quiet, safe space somewhere in your house. Um, you can also buy noise cancelling uh, headphones. I'm not quite sure how available they are at the moment during lockdown, but they also work wonders. You want to make sure that you have everything close by. And this you would have done with your checklist. Um, all the props that you want to use in your session, all the um, apps that are open as well, everything at arm's length so you can grab it. Um, I, I didn't touch on this, but also you can use, um, you can with most of the platforms share a whiteboard or share power of paint, which is on all the computers and draw stuff. But if you prefer to write on a whiteboard, I've, you can you can sh you can use that as well. Um, I just quickly thought about it because that's something that you want close by with your cookies and um, yeah, I'm getting it. Um, I'm going overboard here. Okay, so let's move on. So no eating or drinking, and you wouldn't have done this in your consultation. So don't do it in your online consultation. This is also, I've seen, I've video called people while they're having their um, afternoon snack and it is just off-putting. Don't eat or drink, you can do it afterwards. And what is the next one? Test your sound and your microphone. So we've discussed this uh, previously as well, but I think it's very important to reiterate it again, or just to say again, you know, before each session, you should check your sound and your microphone. These little technical gremlins are awful and they jump in when you least expect it. I think rock up, your, your session might start at nine o'clock, but start your session at 15 minutes prior, check your checklist, put everything close by, check your sound, check your microphone, check your video, check your background, what your patients are seeing. And then when the, when the session actually starts, you're relaxed and ready, ready to go and do what you have to do. This is probably not video calling etiquette, but I have some um, um, clients that work with children. And I wanted to share with you how an online reward does wonders. You can really think outside the box. Um, you, I've, I've helped clients to create a little online reward where you've got uh, ice cream, um, stickers where it's a cone and scoops of ice cream and after each task that the child completes or exercise, you stick up the cone and a scoop of ice cream and you can reward them online, or, uh, uh, do an online reward to say, let's see how big we can build your ice cream tower today. There are some other apps like Manicam that you can use. You can it allows you to do online stickers where you can actually stick funny stickers on the screen, virtual stickers. It's just a great tip to use, but perhaps you already know this. <laughs> so lastly, um, let's talk about distractions. Leave your phone and do, uh, leave your phone, switch off the notifications. You also want to switch off notifications on your computer. So close your um, email so that it doesn't pop up on the side to show that a new mail has come in. Um, and then also a big thing, do not use your keyboard. If you want to make notes, write it down and you can type it up later. You must remember that your mic is mi most probably located close to your keyboard. So this means you'll be typing in your patient's ear and you will be looking down. So you won't be attentive, they don't know, or you're updating your Facebook status or writing a message, typing a message. Rather use your normal pen and paper and write everything down. So this is just some uh, tips um, that we touched on. Let's move over to the next slide. If you enjoy today and you feel like you want uh, simple, simply some more info or perhaps you want somebody to take you through the whole process, why not head over to Telehealth's online store and book a virtual consultation with me? It will be called Telehealth, Getting the Basics Right. 
in our one-on-one -on -one coaching session. Uh, it will consist of two sessions. Sorry, it will consist of two sessions. And together, I will take your hand and guide you to move your service provision from face-to-face -face intervention to supporting your clients online. I will support you throughout the whole process. We'll start by setting up your virtual practice room, um, setting up your digital platform, whichever you've chosen, coaching you on video calling etiquette. I'll help you in creating a checklist and some patient information templates and guide you how, e how to ease your patients into the telehealth session and many more. In our last session, we will review your virtual practice room and see if we need to make any changes. We can also rehearse a mock patient introduction and I'll answer any last questions that you might have. I promise you that after this coaching session, telehealth will simply become another tool in your toolbox. I really want to thank you for joining me today in my webinar. My name is Rini Hanako, and um, you are welcome to contact me or otherwise you can contact Tian, who will um, put you in contact with me. Thank you.